Uh, just a, another very simple little technique of building a story. So here is this is, an, this is another um, story by Louise Cooper. You tell me the story. So there's your, you've actually created uh, your narrative framework, which is, which is important. Um, no people in it. Might be fairly appropriate for South America this year. <laughs> um, I wish to build. Um, any any names for what the story might be called? Catastrophic picnic. Catastrophic picnic. That tells us. That tells. Okay. Okay. That, I like. I like that. I like that. So immediately, because, because you've said, said that, we then have to populate this story with people who are going to be on a picnic, don't we? So you would obviously drill, build out those, draw out those sort of elements and create the, uh, the structure for it and what, what exactly happened, you know, and, and of course there are going to be all sorts of um, stories around that. Obviously a very, very simple um, way to uh, produce it. And it's, this is only, more, only one stage up from a series of flashcards. And uh, all the sound effects on that, by the way, were freebies off the net. You know, there was a couple of websites where you just get through soundtracks, and they're so easy just to plonk into a, a PowerPoint. And again, I did the same thing. It's PowerPoint, and then I just turned it into a, into a video, because it was a PowerPoint. Except trouble with PowerPoints is they're so difficult to transport. You know? And um, <clears throat> but then, of course, we saved you the trouble of doing all that. This is part, part, part of our job, is to try and put all these things together and, and, and make them work. It's based on another story by um, uh, Louise Cooper. I've not time to read it to you. It's called The Storm. Unless you want me to read it to you. Very, very quick. Go on. I will, okay. Tell me, tell me what's wrong with the language. There's something not wrong with the language, but a bit odd about the way it's... I'm going to stop before the last paragraph, of course, in traditional teacher fashion. Yeah, okay. The Storm. The father heard the hissing sound high overhead. He looked up and to his horror saw the boiling mass of clouds sweeping across the sky towards him. Mother! He cried, the rain, the rain! And the mother saw and screamed, help the children, she wailed, we must save the children. Other families had heard the noise and seen the clouds now, and, the panic, and panic broke out in the community, as all the parents rushed to gather their children together. But there were so many children and so many different places for them to play. We'll never find them all in time, the mother sobbed. Oh, hurry, hurry! And the sky darkened, the hissing grew louder, until it became a thundering roar. Save them! Save them! cried the mother. It's too late! shouted someone else. The storm's almost upon us. Save yourself if you can. And then the rain began. It was a drenching downpour, hot and stinging and choking. Everyone scattered, desperately trying to reach shelter. But there was no shelter from that rain. Screams rang out above the roaring in the sky. Bodies fell, struck down by the deadly storm. 
The father tried to drag the mother to safety as the rain hammered down on them and he heard her cry out, saw her collapse, and he was coughing, choking, half drowned and half poisoned. The world blurred, the screams faded, and he fell to lie dead with her among the bodies of their children and their neighbours as, at last, the clouds moved on and the rain stopped. Well, I didn't say it was be a happy story, did I? <laughs> Slightly a bit mute, <laughs> dead bodies. So, anything odd about some of the length or some of the choice of vocabulary? The repetitive, um, repetitive consonant sounds. Yeah, um, she, she does that, I think, for sort of force of storm, actually. I think, I think that's a, a that sort of, um, I think that's an author's trick. Yeah. yeah there was, it, it, it was more to do with the choice of some vocabulary. Hot, stinging, and choking. Um, half drowned, half poisoned, and then I would point out that it's sort of all the way through that mother and father are referred to as the mother, the father, which is not a terribly English thing. In Latin versions might work, <laughs> but uh, mm. so what's it about? It's an anthill. It's a, um, it's a, an an anthill. Yeah. Very perceptive. Yes. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you could. Do it. I mean, the thing is that, 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 that you could. I mean, you, various ways you've got time. You, you build it up. But we do tend to populate, especially adults. We do tend to populate our stories with ourselves, in one form or another. You know, of course, the younger the children are, the more likely they are to populate with animals. Um, uh, but the, la the last paragraph is the gardener switched off his insecticide sprayer. He looked at the rose bush and grinned with satisfaction. Pesky green fly, he said to himself. Let's get rid of them. And he stumped away, leaving the rose bush dripping in the summer sunshine. <laughs> so, very, very simple sort of thing. But it's, it's a nice bit of engagement to the whole thing. The stuff that you might want to refer to, because all of this stuff's been done for you, in more ways. There's a whole load of resources on, on the British Council teaching English website. There's a whole, we're building up a whole literature, use of literature um, uh, section. It, it, it's already, I think, one of the largest sections on teaching English. Um, my plan is for it to take over the whole of teaching English. So there'll be nothing else left. That's my plan. Uh, you've got audio and text, text and activity, hyperfiction. You tell me how you have Hyperfiction is such fun in the classroom. You can do it here because you have the facilities. You know, where stories fork off into all sorts of alarming directions. Uh, and there's a hyperfiction example. Use of film and video. U using manga and cartoon uh, comments, networks, events, and multimedia. Those are the titles that we've got up at the moment. Um, I've only put them there just to impress you, you know, because it's, oh, wow, how many? Um, but, it's, but basically, the aim is, remember, our original target is, is for schools, um, not teaching centres. So we've grouped them in, in, into the way that teachers will look up. So secondary, often meaning upper, upper teens, younger yeah, teens, uh, primary. Um, so it covers, there is a range here from sort of six, six years up to tertiary. There's, a, there's some stuff in there which, which is probably more suited to uh, undergraduate English. So it covers a, a very wide range of, of, of materials and it's building the whole time, we're sort of adding stuff the whole time. And a lot of the stuff gets changed, or you have to keep coming back, because teachers keep writing to us and saying, look, I tried out that idea thing, and then I tried this and this worked really well. And I'm thinking, Can we use your idea? Well, actually, we don't, we just steal it. We, are, we don't put that into it. Not true. Uh, uh, but yeah, so what I like about this is the earlier stuff now has been completely rewritten by people who use it. So it's all been owned by everyone who's using it, which, which gives you a nice warm glow inside. Um, and those, that, that's, that, that's what, there's other stuff on this website which is a parallel thing. When it looked like the brilliant project was going down at one time, a number of writers and myself put together this, this thing, which is sort of semi official. But there's quite a lot of stuff on here, particularly to do with film. Um, and the Britlet thing is, is the usual uh, website. That one. Um, I actually find teaching English so it's it's got tricky to navigate in again. It's, there's so much stuff on it. Uh, you know, you, sort of, you, you can get lost. I, I can't even find my own stuff sometimes. So how other people find it? God only knows. But yeah, if you go into it, the trick is to find this section called Try, and then all the materials are in there. Um, and if you've got any doubts about it, that's me. Um, I'm actually sometimes actually in the office as well. Um, not very.
very often, but I am. And, and I'd love to hear from you. I've run over a bit, but I hope that's okay. Any questions now? Do you want to ask me after? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.